Retro hardware is awesome. It's fun, it's genuine, and it reminds us of the good old days. But sometimes, just sometimes, don't you wish you could go fast? Like really, really fast? Welcome back to Rick's Random Retro, where we like to go really fast. And to go fast, we obviously need a fast machine. This is the Windows 98 Overkill Machine. It features specs that are far above and beyond what Windows 98 was ever designed for. And as we'll see later, it'll let us enjoy a very wide range of games at speeds and resolutions that were unheard of back in the day. And although it features great specs, it's also cheap, since it uses components that have yet to reach full retro status with the associated price hike that comes with it. So, what exactly do we have inside this machine that makes it that fast while still retaining the compatibility we need? Let's take a closer look. Running this show, we have a Socket 754 Athlon 64 3200+, clocked at 2.2 GHz. It is sitting on top of an AS Rocket motherboard that features the n 250 chipset. It's equipped with an 8x AGP slot, built-in SATA controller, USB, and network ports. We have 512MB of DDR memory and a 250GB SATA hard drive. For sound, we're using a SoundMaster Live PCI card, and topping this off for a video card, there's a Radeon 9800 Pro featuring both DVI and VGA out. We obviously need a monitor to go with all this. This is a Dell P992 Professional Grade CRT. An absolute beast of a monitor weighing in at a back-breaking 56 pounds with a depth of 18 inches. A behemoth that produces sharp pictures at our desired resolution of 1600 by 1200 basically the 4K resolution of the day. It's more or less a rebranded Sony monitor that features a legendary Trinitron display technology. Sadly, it's both old and cheap enough to only have VGA input, but hey, you can't have everything right. Putting it all together, we have a formidable machine that can handle just about anything we can throw at it from the late 90s to the early 2000s. And if you like these old CRTs, then I'm sure you'll like the lovely sound they make as they're turned on and do their degauss. Let's take a listen. You can almost feel the static charge of the screen as it booms to life. And I'm sure at some point they'll determine that all the radiation we're exposed to from these was bad for us, but for now, we'll just enjoy it. Booting the machine up, we can see our Athlon processor is correctly reported at 2.2 GHz. I'll be going into the setup, and although I won't be going through every single page here, there's one particular section that caused me some issues when I set the machine up. Since this is running a SATA hard drive, it isn't supported for Windows 98 out of the box, so we have to make some quick adjustments. The exact settings we need for this is going to vary from motherboard to motherboard. We'll be going to our advanced settings, IDE configuration, and then going to the SATA hard drive settings themselves. Here I have to disable any advanced features basically making the drive behave like a parallel one. Once these were set, the Windows 98 installation found it no problem I was able to use the full 250GB. Then finally booting the beast up, it was insanely fast at first. However, like uh, most computers, even overkill ones, you start piling on drivers, features, and other things during the startup process, and it takes a while, so I sped this up a bit. It's fast, just not that fast. The creative rolling thunder startup sound does feel appropriate though, doesn't it? Anyway, so great, you have this Windows 98 total overkill machine here, what can you do with it? Well, I'll show you. Let's take a look at some games. First, let's check out the demo for Tomb Raider 2, originally released in 1997. It has full support for the 3DFX Glide standard, allowing us to flex the muscles of the N-Glide wrapper software. Using this wrapper allows our DirectX 9 video card to basically emulate a Voodoo card, but at speeds that are beyond even the last 3DFX card released, the Voodoo 5. The demo here is running at 1600 by 1200 providing graphics about as crisp as you could possibly get out of this game. Uh. Lara is an archaeologist. You can tell by the way she uses guns to make sure she doesn't cause any unnecessary damage to the local wildlife. Uh, yeah. Ugh. <sighs> 
And as you probably have noticed by now, I'm having a heck of a time getting used to the tank controls in this game. Although I must say I'm quite proud of the swan dive Laura makes here, straight into the rock. Let's kick it up a couple notches with Descent 3 from 1999. The game builds on the first two installments, allowing a full 6 degrees of movement. That is, that you can rotate your ship and fly in any direction in the 3D environments. Spatial awareness can be tricky, as can the controls. I'm using a keyboard for this, although it's likely easier with the use of a joystick. The game is running in Direct 3D mode at 1600 by 1200 It is straining the video card a bit, as the game isn't fully smooth, but it still gives you an idea what a game from the era cranked up to max looks like. Let's rewind the clock again and take a look at an earlier Windows-supported game. Warcraft 2 is the second game in a legendary series by Blizzard Entertainment. It was released in 1996 once again, pitting the humans versus the orcs, but now featuring boats. This is really a DOS game, but it's made to run in Windows as well, where it basically launches a DOS window to run. The reason I wanted to showcase this was both the range this machine has, as well as the fact that it's using Sound Blaster 16 emulation via the live PCI card. It's not perfect, but if supported, it'll at least provide a decent gaming experience. At once, sire. Yes. Job's done. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, me lord. Yes, my lord. At once, sire. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, my lord. At once, sire. As you wish, sir. as you wish. Me lord? All right. Right hell. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. And of course, you have to have a racing game. This is the fifth game and is still running Need for Speed Three, series. Two, Need for Speed Porsche one, Unleashed, released go. in 2000. A favorite of mine, especially in multiplayer, it departed a bit from the previous entries in that it focused exclusively on one car brand. It had an interesting career progression system where you played as a Porsche test driver moving up in the ranks and unlocking newer and more powerful cars along the way. The game is running at 1280x1024 here as that's as high as I was able to get it natively. Still it runs great and it's still a lot of fun. Plus your avatar can have frosted tips. I mean, come on, that's just great. The very first Unreal was released in 1998. I remember being absolutely blown away by the graphics at the time and it really pushed my machine to the limits. Here we're able to run the game at 1600 by 1200 without even breaking a sweat. I'd say it still holds up pretty well as a game and provides quite the nostalgia kick. There's just something about the simple geometry and colored light sources. As far as the gameplay, well, it's still an FPS. Hey, you escaped from a prison transport, have some guns and go blast your way through anything that moves or gets in your way. Classic.
A few things to note with this machine. First off, a lot of the newer games could run even better at lower resolutions, of course. The Radeon 9800 Pro is a great card, but it eventually hits the limit. It should allow games into the Windows XP era quite easily, though with some sacrifices in quality. The second thing is the DOS compatibility. This machine has full DOS available and can boot into it no problems. The major problem we face is the PCI sound card, which requires DOS emulation to provide audio. This in itself should not be an issue as Creative provided these and there are plenty of guides to follow online. Even so, I spent a lot of time and was simply not able to get it to work, which is a bummer. It's supposedly not great emulation, but would have extended the range of this machine even further back. I read that some motherboards simply don't like to play nice with this emulation and I think the major culprit is that I can't assign IRQ values manually in the BIOS. All things told, this machine was cheap to build and unlocks a huge selection of games. I'll be using it basically as my primary capture machine, and likely the one I sit down with to enjoy some of the games I might not have been able to run on the machines I had when I was younger. And that about sums it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, but if you prefer videos about more original hardware, here are a couple that may suit your interest. This is Rick, thanks for watching, remember everyone, stay classy.